Well, that was the former UK Prime Minister, uh, Tony Blair. Now let's get straight to Joan, John Stilidis, rather, geopolitical strategist at Trilogy Advisors, who joins us now to talk about uh, what the new Biden administration can actually usher in. Uh, John, thank you for joining us. I think the, the first question is, how is Joe Biden going to you know, deal with Russia, given also uh, the audacity with which Vladimir Putin dealt with Mr. Navalny? It's going to be a very important question in shaping the geopolitical agenda of the Biden administration, Francine, and thank you again for having me. Uh, we're not really sure yet how they're going to begin the U.S.-Russia relationship, uh, but Vladimir Putin has sent a very important message that he feels that he can act with relative impunity, undaunted, in his treatment of uh, domestic dissidents and uh, opposition leaders such as Mr. Navalny. I think also he believes that he has the Europeans on his side because the Trump administration was unsuccessful in trying to stop the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that doubles Germany's dependence on Russia for energy supplies. And also there's a question inside of NATO as to whether or not the Trump style of diplomacy kind of beating uh, some of our allies with a two by four to get them to ramp up their defense spending to over 2% has led to a raw relationship that has made the NATO cohesiveness a little bit more of a challenge than one would have wanted. And so NATO may be somewhat weaker in its cohesiveness in dealing with Russia. Joe Biden has looked to make that a priority of repairing that, that alliance relationship. And also the question of Vladimir Putin, both directly with the Biden administration, looking at the U.S. in a very antagonistic manner right now. He's very much concerned about the team of advisors led by Victoria Nuland that Joe Biden is bringing in that bring a very anti-Russian bias to U.S. foreign policy. And also the yeah. fact that Vladimir Putin has been increasingly cozying up to General Secretary Xi Jinping of China and looking to see where maybe there won't be a strategic alliance between China and Russia, but there is definitely a very strong and pronounced tactical uh, partnership right now looking to take advantage of what they see as American weakness in Europe, in the Middle East and in Southeast Asia. But, John, how much does, you know, President Biden, once he becomes president on Wednesday, focus on foreign policy if he still has a large percentage of the population not believing he won the U.S. election um, fairly? It's going to be a great challenge for President Biden. Uh, as you correctly note, Francine, uh, most polls taken over the last 10 days after the January 6th mob events on the U.S. Capitol show that still about 90 percent of American Republicans would vote for Donald Trump if the election were held today. And about 80 percent of Republicans do not believe that Joe Biden won the presidential election in a fair and legal manner. So there's going to be a very important reconciliation process. I think that's going to be very important. I think Vice, uh, well, former Vice President, now President-elect Joe Biden, is sending very strong signals that he was elected to heal the nation, to unify the nation. Some of the rhetoric in the last few weeks has been a little bit more divisive, I think, than one would expect if that's the true objective. But his centrist instincts, I think, can serve the Democratic Party well if there is an effort to actually bring the parties together and solve the problems that are most important for the American people. But if Joe Biden is overtly influenced by the more sort of socialist wing, uh, more radical left that is looking to punish Republicans and to act with vengeance against them, especially against uh, not only Trump supporters, say, who were at the rally, but 75 million Americans who would be subject to second-class citizenship if some of these more radical types had their way, well, that's not just polarization. That puts us in a very, very bad direction, both for the country and for American leadership around the world. So, so what should his top three priorities be in the coming, in the first 100 days? I think it's very important to see where there are ways that Democrats and Republicans can work together. I don't know about the, the stimulus package and whether there are certain aspects of it that are going to be very problematic for the Republicans. Of course, the Republican Party, as everyone knows, is a party that prefers smaller government, lower taxes, less regulation. But Joe Biden is going to have to satisfy some of the more radical elements in the Democratic Party with, say, the bailout of state pension funds and also moving towards a number of climate-related regulations. So that's understandable. But the degree to which Joe Biden is able to bring Republicans to the table and say, look, we're all one country here. Let's find ways on the issues that we can perhaps compromise on to do good things for the economy, to lift up, as uh, former Prime Minister Tony Blair just said now, to try to deal with the economic destruction 
of many of these misguided lockdown policies resulting from the COVID pandemic. So I think that outreach is going to be very important. And then on the Republican side, Francine, the question is, how do they respond? Because about 35 to 40 percent of Republicans are what I would call hardcore Trump supporters that may want no reconciliation, no unification if it means with Joe Biden. They want the Trump presidency again. That's going to be a very difficult part of the base to placate. But about 60 percent of Republicans who are more traditional may be seeking ways to work with uh, Democrats. And I think we'll have a better snapshot of this, Francine, come 2022. Those will be the congressional Mm -hmm. elections, of course. And traditionally, the party out of power in the White House tends to do better. So that bodes well for the Republican Party, but depends on what Donald Trump does over the next two years, what the Republican leadership in the Senate and the House do over the next two years, how Democrats treat Republicans, and of course, how world events shape American politics. John, thank you so much. John Tillid is there, Trilogy Advisors, geopolitical strategist. Now,